Update 1.1.2, which I'm just going to call 5 for my insanity's sake, released early on Wednesday, bringing with it some actual content. The first real splash of that medic bag magic we've been promised. Does I am a little disillusioned at the moment with how the game's been handled would be an understatement, and I still don't believe an update like this one, which feels a bit fragmented and held together by duct tape and dreams, is what we need at this stage in the rejuvenation project. But it's still interesting to talk about because it's left Payday 3 in a state I can't remember a Payday game being in since maybe Grinders launch for Payday 2. Right now, as of this update, simply put, the game is absolutely trivial in loud after just a few ludicrous heist buffs in the form of new skills I'm going to run you through in this video. If you thought overkill was easy before, you ain't seen nothing yet, as the only real danger to you if you build a certain way at this point are those all too common cloakers. Anyway, the truth of it is, I've had a good time with this update and I think it will appeal to the diehard fans of the game, but my main worry at the moment is that the game is going to be in a dangerously unsustainable state from here on in. It's fun to get a taste of the old Payday 2 Power Fantasy back, but after reality sets in and you remember there are only 11 heists in the game for you to play around on and that they're now basically all the same experience as Dallas has evolved into an immortal being, I worry it won't be long before you get bored again and go back to a game with a bit more respect for your time. Anyway, a little less doom and gloom, let's start this video by working through the new skill line of Fortitude. If you want a full breakdown of what each and every new skill in the line does, my most recent video actually has you covered. Instead, today I'm going to spend more time touching on how the skill line plays, its role within the survivability meta, and most importantly, how fun it is to use in practice. As I've mentioned previously, with the addition of the new adrenaline mechanic to the game, also coming in this update, Fortitude feels a lot more like a standalone perk deck than any other prior skill line. As a quick refresher, external sources of health gain, those being medic bags and first aid kits, will now utilise any wasted portion of their heal after hitting full health to grant you an additional green overheal health bar, which takes the brunt of any incoming damage first, even before your armour. With Fortitude being built around this new mechanic, its individual skills are a lot less fragmented and tend to work well specifically alongside each other, giving it that pick up and play feel you might expect from an old Payday 2 perk. That doesn't mean it lacks any hybrid utility though, as getting health for free is always nice, Pain Ass and Bowlier is one of the most interesting and probably powerful skills in the game, and the mastery skill Stockpile has excellent synergy with Deep Pockets, giving you up to 4 more deployable charges. If we look at the skill line in its entirety though, it really is about promoting a very simple but quite aggressive playstyle. It leans into having more downs, allowing for riskier plays, buffs your health pool to assist you in that aggression, and also augments your capacity for adrenaline, that green health bar which scales alongside your base max health. Whilst it is worth mentioning that adrenaline decays over time, if it isn't actively used to block incoming damage, this decay is incredibly easy to offset with any source of healing, so I didn't really notice it impact the efficacy of my extra tankiness. The icing on the cake in this skill line is definitely Pain Assembolia, a skill that's designed to be run with a focused adrenaline build, doubling the effect of edge, grit and rush when you have access to the resource, meaning at all times, whenever you gain adrenaline, you will take 20% less damage to that resource as it always procs grit. Not to mention, the added 10% damage and movement speed feels amazing, accentuating the aggressiveness of this playstyle even further. In my opinion, the ideal way to run it is with one plate standard lining, not only because you will absolutely zoom around the heist with 20% rush, but because one plate armour has also been passively buffed as of this patch due to a new skill I'll talk about later. Weapon wise, Fortitude is obviously best ran alongside a powerful primary that can make use of the new breakpoints gained by Pain Assembolia. I noticed the SA really appreciated that bonus damage, gaining new one shot potential on units like shields. In case you're wondering, yes, I do suspect the best build in Payday 3 will make use of Fortitude, with everything but maybe Health Siphon for solo players being a must pick up. The build I'm showcasing here was incredibly overwhelming, and I could get away with virtually anything so long as the Cloakers didn't get to me. I don't even believe I've discovered the optimal way to play it yet, and I was still hanging around picking fights on Overkill just for fun, because honestly, nothing was a threat. I'm also happy to report I didn't find it quite as clunky to use as I expected I would. This is because the resource management and tracking wasn't a problem at all, given all the healing buffs we now have in the game. I still don't think it's the smoothest implementation of the skill set, and I just wish fiddly moment to moment micromanagement was less of a focus in a heisting series that's never taken itself so seriously in the past. But Fortitude hasn't fallen completely foul of attrition, sucking the fun out of it just yet. After describing the very real highs of Fortitude, I do now have to touch on the lows of certain skill changes. Sometimes, when I read through these, I just feel like it's all being added so begrudgingly, like an afterthought that didn't fit the initial vision. Too much of a compromise for my liking. 
Take a look, for example, at the updated version of Misdirect in Strategist. Now, don't get me wrong, the old version was very situational. It simply protected you from cloakers and zappers, using up any rush decks you had in exchange. But this new effect is oh so disappointing. It's there just to say, look, Dodge is back. I'm serious, if I could boil down the entire design philosophy of Payday 3 into a single skill to show someone what might be causing the game issues, I'd probably show them misdirect. You guys love Dodge in Payday 2, right? It's back, baby! That's the tagline that draws you in. Dare I say, blows you away. Except, this time, you need to have access to an arbitrary stat to make any use of it. It's limited to a maximum probability of 1 in 10, which is effectively useless for any serious build, and it'll only work on marked enemies, so you better enjoy pressing middle mouse button to point at things at all times to get any usage out of it. Oh, and unless you're pissing around with motion sensors, you can only mark special units, so it's only going to work against roughly 10% of all cops on a heist. It's the most non-committal, functionally useless apology of a skill I've ever seen. Hell, it's not even the first bit of misdirection we've been served up for this game. I have to ask, how can you create something so insanely powerful, but also creative and cohesive as Fortitude, yet come up with this when first tackling Dodge? It's genuinely baffling, and only bothers me so much because it's symptomatic of so many of the problems I have with Payday 3's skill system, the most pressing being that they're bloated out of viability by having ridiculous conditions. And also, when an update basically amounts to a few balance changes, new skills, I think you have every right to moan when 10% of the supposed new content is effectively worthless. An example of a skill that's gone the other way though is Precision Shot. It used to have a frustrating stipulation to play around, as it used up edge for bonus damage when you fired whilst ADSing through a magnified scope, but now it just requires edge to function instead of using it up, and gives your shots the ability to penetrate another target in addition. So, this skill is immensely strong now. It's obviously great on the weapons it's intended for use on, in the marksman rifle category. But honestly, any weapon that has access to a magnified scope now probably should use it, in order to get access to this skill. It's simply offering too much damage to miss out on. For reference, the R900 can now two or three shot doses in the faceplate with it, and the SAA144 can one shot even heavy swats to the body. Trust me, just give it a go with the preset Sentinel version, it's beyond overpowered, I have no idea how it made it through testing. Coupled with the godlike damage resistance you can generate from Fortitude, this sort of ludicrous damage output is the core of what's now trivialising the game. Like I said, I'm here for it, it's fun, for now, but I do think it should act as a kick up the backside for the devs, telling them that we desperately need some new, harder difficulties to play around on. Tank, the old meta skill line before Fortitude came to town, has also received some love, except this time it's for its mastery skill so any build can make use of it. Clean Slate allows you to restore your first armor plate, if you're armorless, by interacting with an armor repair kit, which without the skill can only repair damaged, not missing plates. I understand the intention behind this change, but again, it's another one that favours the heist a lot more than I think the design team realised. Now, I don't see the point in running armour with more than, say, two plates, because as we know, armour bags are very finite resources, but armour repair kits are incredibly accessible. You can get them from dozers or in their droves for trading hostages, which is now even easier after buffs to the manipulator line in the last update. As you can see, within just one wave, you can turn high population heists into resource treasure troves within seconds, and thanks to Clean Slate, you'll effectively be creating three plates worth of armour every other trade, which is why I've become a standard lining player overnight. Those really are the high impact skill changes, Overbearing received an interesting buff allowing you to lead three tied hostages around with you at once now, which could have its utility, especially in stealth. Swift has been moved into the escapist tree to make room for disengage to move out of the tank mastery slot, and with kinetic short circuits you can now recharge your ECMs whenever you shoot a taser battery pack. For once, this is the sort of micromanagement I can get behind as it's kinda niche but also engaging. The stun effect whilst using the ECM is also pretty cool and slightly underrated in my opinion, so this should see a bit more play now. Cutting Shot has also had some numerical tweaks to give it more impact on low base penetration weapons, hopefully bringing up the viability of those lower damage per shot guns in the game. Of course, it also helps that we now have 7 additional skill points to mess around with, going up to a new cap at level 100 of 28, so it's not even like you're going to have to make build sacrifices to pick up these overpowered new options. Whilst it might end up slightly overshadowed by the new Fortitude playstyle, which probably prefers to use standard lining, Adaptive Armor is now in the game. As I've already explained in the past, it trades out 20% damage reduction in exchange for avoiding trauma damage altogether. This means that it'll always regenerate a full chunk after waiting out the regen timer. 
Obviously, the trade-off is that you can get blown up whilst wearing this thing with only 5% total damage reduction, especially against dozers. But if I were to lean back into an armor playstyle, you can be sure I'd be more inclined to go with adaptive, as it just feels like you have so much more control over your destiny while wearing it, instead of being whittled away over time without really making any gameplay mistakes. Let's be honest, dozers chew through all armor types at close range anyway, so that should never be the deciding factor in what you equip. I found that coupled with the regen offered by plate up, which has been nerfed with its addition to only prop once every 2 seconds, I could still play incredibly aggressively and absorb fair amounts of incoming damage. With low plate armors obviously being passively buffed by Clean Slate's addition, I think this is going to be a go-to choice for many, and it doesn't take a genius to realise why. It's just armor, as armor was intended, instead of the decaying second health bar we had at launch. Finally, for this update, there were a couple of balance tweaks for two of the least used guns in the game. First, after its recent buff, the R900 received a little more love in the field department. It will now allow you to cycle its bolt without scoping out. Quick scoping is all well and good, but being forced to scope in and out was always frustrating. This weapon now feels excellent to use, as like I mentioned earlier, with the new version of Precision Shot and its recent damage and armor pen buffs, it's an absolute beast. It's still hard to make use of than say the SA or VF7S, but it does finally fit its proper niche as the game's only true primary sniper rifle option. The Ziv Commando also received what amounts to buffs across the board. It did get struck by a small damage nerf over 25 meters, but that just serves to accentuate the close range buffs it received, turning it into the shotgun of the SMG class. This thing now shreds from up to 15 meters away, and also receives some much needed base armor penetration, that pesky hidden stat which virtually dictates the viability of a gun on its own. Overall, this weapon is now fun to use. Once again, I also don't want to undervalue the improved feel of this thing, now with faster entry to sprint speeds pre and post fire. Weapon feel is everything, and finally, the Ziv seems to have hit its groove and has a unique purpose. Shout out to whoever is behind these recent weapon balance changes, they've been spot on so far. That's pretty much it for the update though. I should also mention that they fixed the invisible walls on Turbid Station, that was inexplicably blocking you from crouching under some of its train cars. It was a problem of Starbreeze's own making, added after the heist launch, so it's nice to see it fixed, although I can hardly praise them for being expeditious about it. So, when we take the good with the bad, how does Update 5 come out in the wash? Well, it does have that fun factor, if you can overlook the fact that whatever game balance there once was, is now strewn across the carpets in the Starbreeze offices. But every key issue that's supposedly being addressed remains untouched. You'll still have a nightmare finding a game, servers might suck, and there are only 11 heists to play. I just think it's fundamentally not going to have the mass appeal or add enough to the game to bring the majority of that inactive player base back at the moment. But hey, Starbreeze picked the pace. If their analysts say there'll still be players around in six months' time once we get to the real meat of Operation Medic Bag, who am I to argue otherwise? Update 5 is fun, it's got its low points, but I'm enjoying the game more today than I was yesterday. It's something. Baby steps. Anyway, check out Apex Gaming PCs. They're much more affordable than they once were, but still built to the same incredible quality. My full range is available from the link below. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. I'll see you soon. A huge thank you to my dedicated Patreon backers. If you want to join this crew in Going Infamous, check out the link below and pledge as little as $2 to see your name in the credits, or get 24 hour early access to future videos and vote on upcoming content. Take care, I'll see you all soon.